When it comes to high profile movies, casting is a very deliberate process. But before the Marvel Comics universe became the one we know today, there were many other A-listed celebs who were invited for auditions. Could you imagine Daniel Craig as Thor, for example? So let's find out how the cast would have looked like if these 13 stars hadn't turned down the roles. Hi, I'm Jeremy, and welcome to Asa Channel. Some characters are played by one actor for decades, but some have already been replaced up to three times. Post the Lou Ferrigno Hulk, Hulk has a long list of replacements, starting with Eric Bana, who played Bruce Banner in 2003's Hulk, and Edward Norton in 2008's The Incredible Hulk. Turns out the fight for the lead role of The Incredible Hulk was much more intense. You guys won't believe it, but the director's choice for Hulk's second movie was originally Mark Ruffalo. But to our surprise, it was revealed that David Duchovny, aka Mulder from The X-Files, was also invited for the role of Hulk. So if you're wondering how the universe would have looked with David, I am pretty sure they would have still chosen Mark instead of him, because that's what the director wanted in the first place. Eventually the question arose, why didn't they go with Ruffalo from the start if they wanted him so much? Well, it seems like it all came down to hype. Duchovny and Ruffalo are very good actors, but the studio needed someone to popularize the character. Who would have been more fitting than Norton from the beloved Fight Club and Primal Fear? He was already a big screen name, so the other two hunks didn't stand a chance. But the studio played the wrong card as Norton got fired because because he was rewriting the scripts and arguing with the scriptwriters. Number one rule, worship the scriptwriters. What, did you really write that? Anyway, David lost his role to Norton and maybe it was because of his interview before he was cast. So the Avengers are real. I knew it. The government has been hiding it for years. How can I disprove lies that are stamped with an official seal? And no one, no government agency has jurisdiction over the truth. Joaquin Phoenix is one of the most underrated actors. That's probably because he doesn't like to keep up with his celebrity status. He has no Instagram, no Facebook, no Twitter. Though he's an activist in support of PETA, Red Cross, and Amnesty International. But no one knows about it because he doesn't post about it. Wow, imagine that. Doing a good deed and not broadcasting it on social media? Crazy. He's not as talkative as Chris Pratt or Jennifer Lawrence and is pretty vulnerable. That's why I was pretty surprised that the studio invited him to audition. He's undeniably talented, but being an Avenger means a lot of social and public involvement and promotion. Plus, it's usually a long running position. I still cannot get why they thought Joaquin would be interested in that. Despite Joaquin's own strangeness, he did not feel the Doctor Strange character was the one for him. As he said, I think they make some great, fun movies. There's nothing wrong. I'm not a f***ing like, cinephile. I'm not a snob and I'm totally fine with I'm trying to, how to figure out to say this most diplomatically. Okay, I think everybody was really happy with how things turned out. All parties were satisfied. Indeed, Cumberbatch pulled off the character really well. Perhaps Joachim would have brought a bit more gloominess to the character, but everything seems to have worked out for the best. I think you'll agree that the Joker is a very suitable role for him. Emily Blunt had to turn down not one, but two major Marvel roles. She was cast for the role of Black Widow, in fact, edging ahead of Scarlett Johansson, but the negotiations were canceled as Emily had a scheduling conflict with another film. The Jack Black feature, Gulliver's Travels. Now that's all true, but it's not the whole story. Turns out that after signing on for The Devil Wears Prada, Emily was obliged to appear in any movie of 20th Century Fox's choice. Even if she'd have loved to stayed in a superhero movie, she was not able to decline Gulliver's Travels. Well, Emily says she's kind of glad she didn't become an Avenger because they only let female cast members play second fiddle. I guess that was before the days of uh, Captain Marvel and uh, there's gonna be a new Scarlett Johansson movie where she plays Black Widow, which I'm very excited about, but anyway. But if you listen carefully, you might just hear some tiny notes of disappointment because Gulliver's Travels failed miserably. The same scheduling conflict happened when she was offered the role of Peggy Carter for Captain America the First Avenger. Fortunately, we know that her career is doing just fine, playing major roles in A Quiet Place and Mary Poppins. Imagine if Emily had a scheduling conflict for the Avengers and the British fairy nanny. Oh, bloody hell. They were impressed with John Wick, killing three men in a bar with a pencil. But that was before they knew what I can do with a spoonful of sugar. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Fun fact, we could have had an entire superhero family. John Krasinski, Emily's husband, was invited for Captain America auditions, but he turned them down. As he said, it's that zen thing of let life take you where it may, and I never would have been here if I'd gotten Captain America. Well, you have to be careful with this kind of philosophy, because you may end up on the room or Jaws the Revenge. Ego, the living planet, spoiler alert, I'll give you a few seconds to run away if you're one of the few people in the world who hasn't seen Guardians of the Galaxy 2 yet. Anyway, 
Yeah, have you run away? Good, get out of here if you haven't seen it. But anyway, AKA Father of Peter Quill is the main villain in the second movie. The role actually went to the legendary Kurt Russell, but Tim Gunn first tried to cast Matthew McConaughey. To that I say amen. To that I say all right, all right, all right. That would have been the chillest ego ever seen. I personally don't get why Gunn wanted McConaughey for this role. It's not that I don't like him. It's because Matthew is just 10 years older than Chris Pratt. That would have been a lot of CGI work. He looks more like his buddy than his father, especially if you think about the flashback scene. It was nice to see Russell de-aged, but McConaughey would have looked pretty much the same. Of course, they might have pulled off the true detective trick with a ponytail and mustache, but Matthew McConaughey turned down the role anyway, instead choosing the movie adaptation of Stephen King's The Dark Tower. Pretty sure it went like this. All right, all right, all right. So I'm actually hitting on a woman in a car? No, 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 no. Tim, here's the deal. I know you're worried about, you're worried about the script, but how about we take our shirts off and just play some bongos? It's a crazy thing to wrap your brain around, but you just gotta keep living, you know? So far, we know that Rocket Raccoon and Nebula are the only survivors from the Guardians of the Galaxy. But who knows whether the directors would have kept Rocket alive if he had been voiced by another actor. In fact, if you Google Jim Carrey's Rocket Raccoon, you get seven movies almost ruined by Adam Sandler as one of the top links in the search results. So yeah, both comedians were invited to try out for the role or roles. They don't know whether the MCU was considering them for either Rocket or Groot. Eventually, Carrey turned it down because he was more up for Kick-Ass 2, which he did a good job in, by the way. So the roles went to Bradley Cooper and Vin Diesel. I can't imagine Sandler's irritated and slightly shouty voice as Rocket. I think we're all glad that Cooper came up with that special voice as it fits his character perfectly. I live for the simple things, like how much this is gonna hurt. He called it, it's like Gilbert Gottfried meets Joe Pesci. I wonder how it would have been if Jim Carrey was cast. <laughs> I am Groot. There's also a long-running legend that Tom Cruise was almost cast for the role of Iron Man in the 2000s, but the actor dismissed the rumor saying, not close, not close, and I love Robert Downey Jr. I can't imagine anyone else in that role, and I think it's perfect for him. He also added some snobbish remarks saying that he picks roles based on what he can learn from the character. But it's clear why he did not find something interesting in Stark, but Robert Downey Jr. did. John Favre wanted Downey Jr. from the very beginning as he saw some similarities between him and Tony Stark, including partying, addictions, and a hard road back to a normal life. By the way, there was even a rumor we don't know if it's true, but there was a rumor that Tom demanded that his face be entirely visible at all times for an Iron Man movie. So that would have required some kind of transparent visor. Maybe there's a rule about covering your face written in the Scientology book. But I still think that's a hell of a crazy demand, but maybe it's just a rumor. Uh, Sam Rockwell was also invited to try out for Tony Stark. Favreau liked him a lot, but not more than Downey Jr. It would have been funny if he ended up alongside Edward Norton, because they look a little bit alike. You and me, we're a lot alike in a lot of ways. But he was so impressive that he landed the role of jerky Justin Hammer in Iron Man 2. Before casting the ageless Maguire, his best buddy Leonardo DiCaprio was invited for the role of Spider-Man. But rumor has it, he turned down the role in favor of his friend, asking the directors to give him a chance instead. Tobey Maguire has a long record of acting weird both on set and allegedly at the gambling table. What is this? I like Tobey Maguire. By the way, if you are interested in the crazy details of Maguire's fall from grace, check out our video. Anyway. Before the MCU was ready to jump into working on Spider-Man 2, Toby refused to do the major parts of the superhero tricks because of back pain and refused to do a body scan for some VFX. The MCU immediately started negotiating with Jake Gyllenhaal, who I've been told I look like, by the way. Of course, Toby got nervous and agreed to do anything the studio wanted, including the body scan and medical examination that, surprise, didn't reveal any injuries. So Jake had to step back, but not for long, because we'll see him very soon in Spider-Man Far From Home as Mr which I'm super stoked about. I'm sure that you can easily name a couple of famous titans, like Halfer Julius Björnson from Game of Thrones, you know, the big one who crushed the eyes, uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, probably Shaquille O'Neal from the NBA, and Hulk Hogan from a sex tape. The MCU was looking for its perfect household name titan for the part of Drax the Destroyer, and ended up with the retired wrestler David Batista. But before that, they offered Jason Momoa an opportunity to try his luck in the Marvel comic universe. Jason already had a huge callosaur of squeaking 
tweaking fans after his Game of Thrones performance, but he didn't want to remain a rustic stack of muscles that has like two or three words in a script. So Momoa turned down the role. Okay, now, to end this off, I just want to spice it up a little bit with a crazy rumor. There was a legend roaming the internet for a long time that, pay attention, Daniel Craig, yep, the guy from James Bond, was offered the role of Thor. A reporter asked Craig if he was planning on trying a new character role such as Thor, and he laughed it off. God knows why, but he said that the MCU was already negotiating with him. Turns out it was a joke, when fans started to go crazy because he's a bit old for the role. He had to clarify that he didn't really mean it. I have no idea about Thor, I was just having a joke, he said. You know who also was joking? Beyonce, about writing her own lyrics. Oh, you know who's the biggest comedian? Nixon. He had his friends help gather materials for his upcoming stand-up show at Watergate. There definitely should have been a line between a good joke and a lie. So, let me know whom from the list you would have liked to have seen in the MCU in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Jeremy out.